The Exorcism of Emily Rose is a gripping horror movie that tells the story of a young woman's possession by a demonic entity and the subsequent trial of the priest who attempted to exorcise her. The film is loosely based on the true story of Annalise Michael, a German woman who underwent an exorcism in the 1970s and died due to malnutrition and dehydration. What is exorcism? Are devils and demonic possessions real? Exorcism is a religious practice in which a person, typically a priest or other religious authority figure, attempts to expel a supposed evil spirit or demon from a possessed individual. Exorcism is most commonly associated with the Roman Catholic Church, but it is also practiced in other religions such as Islam, Judaism, and Hinduism. Let us first understand how exorcism became popular in our society and the outcomes of it when practiced on Emily Rose. The belief in demonic possession and the practice of exorcism dates back to ancient times, with mentions of exorcism rituals found in many cultures and religions. In Christianity, exorcism is mentioned in the New Testament, where Jesus is described as casting out demons from possessed individuals. During an exorcism, the individual being possessed may exhibit symptoms such as speaking in tongues, convulsions, and aversion to holy objects. In ancient Mesopotamia, exorcism was used to banish evil spirits from the bodies of the possessed. The Babylonians, for example, used exorcism rituals to drive away demons that were believed to cause illness and disease. Similarly, in ancient Egypt, exorcism was used to drive out evil spirits from the bodies of the possessed. The practice of exorcism became more widespread in the Catholic Church during the Middle Ages, with the belief that demonic possession was a real and present danger. In the 20th century, exorcism became more controversial and popular, with many people questioning its validity and effectiveness. In 1949, the case of Annalise Michael drew widespread attention to the dangers of exorcism and the movie. The exorcism of Emily Rose is inspired by it too. The exorcism of Emily Rose centers around Emily Rose, played by Jennifer Carpenter, a 19-year-old college student who begins experiencing strange and frightening symptoms after leaving home to attend school. These symptoms include hearing voices, experiencing seizures and hallucinations, and speaking in languages she does not know. Her condition worsens over time, and she eventually seeks the help of a local parish priest, Father Richard Moore. This is similar to Michael's story who was diagnosed with epilepsy and depression, but her family believed that she was possessed by demons and sought the help of the Catholic Church. Michael underwent a series of exorcisms, during which she refused food and water, and eventually died of malnutrition and dehydration. Do you know the movie is directed by Scott Derrickson, who has a strong reputation for his horror and supernatural films? The complete story presents the case of Father Richard Moore, a Catholic priest accused of negligent homicide after attempting to exorcise student Emily Rose. Aaron Bruner, a driven attorney who aspires to become a senior partner in her law firm finds it out. Later story describes that Emily had stopped attending college because she kept waking up at 3 a.m. with muscle pains and delusions. She went back to her parents' house and received medication for her psychosis and epilepsy. When Emily's health didn't get better, Moore was called in, and after assessing the situation and making some observations, he came to the conclusion that Emily was under the control of a demon. Father Moore was convinced that Emily is possessed by a demon and began performing an exorcism on her. Moore attempted to exorcise Emily with the approval of her parents, but the attempt was eventually unsuccessful. However, during the exorcism, Emily's physical condition deteriorates rapidly, and Father Moore is forced to stop the ritual. Emily is taken to the hospital, where she dies soon after. Father Moore is subsequently charged with negligent homicide, and the film follows his trial. More reason that since Emily's drugs paralyzed her brain activity and kept the demon out of reach, they were to blame for the unsuccessful expulsion. When Moore is taken to the witness stand, he tells his evidence because he wants to share Emily's tale. When Bruner wakes up at 3 in the morning to the scent of burning to bride, he starts witnessing paranormal activity at his house. Moore cautions her that she might be a target for the demons and admits that he too had similar experiences the night before the exorcism. Bruner calls anthropologist Sadir Adani to testify on the spiritual possession beliefs of numerous cultures in support of Moore, but Thomas, the prosecution dismisses her arguments as gibberish. A medical professional who witnessed the exorcism, Graham Cartwright, sends Bruner a cassette tape on which the exorcism was recorded, and Moore presents the tape as proof. Cartwright is unexpectedly hit and killed by a car, 
which prevents him from giving his testimony to support the exorcism and disprove the prosecution's medical case. Bruner retreats to her office in tears, where her supervisor threatens to fire her if she permits Moore to speak once more. In spite of her boss's threat, Moore agrees to let Bruner share the rest of Emily's story when he visits him in prison. Moore re-enters the witness stand the following day and reads a letter that Emily penned just before she passed away. Emily was visited by the Virgin Mary in a meadow close to her home the morning after the exorcism, and she was given the option of going to heaven. Emily, however, decided to put up with her anguish and subsequently developed stigmata on her hands. Thomas interprets the tattoos as evidence of self-inflicted wounds rather than a supernatural indication. The jury ultimately returns a guilty judgment, but surprises the judge by asking for a credit for time served. Brewster first reacts with shock to the offer, but ultimately agrees, allowing Moore to leave. A partnership in her business is offered to Bruner, who declines. Following their visit to Emily's grave, Moore and Bruner predict that the day will come when Emily will be canonized. It is revealed in the epilogue that Moore never challenged his conviction. Well, the majority of the film takes place in a courtroom. There are several spooky flashbacks that show the circumstances leading up to Emily's exorcism and her tragic death at the age of 19. The Real Emily Rose The real Emily Rose, Annalise, when saw a neurologist, the doctor identified temporal lobe epilepsy as the source of her seizures, memory loss and visual and auditory hallucinations, and after receiving treatment she enrolled in the university in 1973. But the medications she was given didn't work, and as the year went on, her health started to get worse. Even though she continued to take her medication, Annalise started to feel as though she was being controlled by a devil and that there had to be another way to deal with her condition. Everywhere she walked, she started to perceive the devil's face, and she claimed to hear demons speaking in her ears. She reasoned that the devil must be in possession of her when she overheard demons telling her that she would rot in hell when she was praying. Finally, she decided to reach out to a priest who could perform an exorcism. The practice was carried out for around 10 months. Through these sessions, Annalise revealed that she believed she was possessed by six demons, Lucifer, Cain, Judas Iscariot, Adolf Hitler, Nero, and Fleischmann, a disgraced priest. Annalise was frequently restrained during these 10 months so the priests could perform exorcism rituals. She gradually stopped eating, and on July 1, 1976, she passed away from malnutrition and dehydration. The real-life case of Annalise Michael on which the movie is based was a source of controversy in Germany, with some arguing that her death was the result of medical neglect rather than demonic possession. Some critics of the film argued that it glorified exorcism and could lead to dangerous practices in real life. In conclusion, The Exorcism of Emily Rose is a chilling and thought-provoking horror movie that is well worth watching and the use of visual effects creates an unsettling and horror atmosphere. The film raises important questions about faith, science, and the nature of demonic possession. But it is also important to approach the film with a critical eye and to recognize its potential dangers. What are your thoughts on this? Do you believe in supernatural possessions and powers? Are they for real or is it just any other medical condition? Do comment your views below.